Hi, my name is Peter Dove, author of Master Dressage, and today I just want to talk a little bit about rising trot and, and teaching rising trot to young riders. This is Edward, he's five years old, uh, he can do his rising trot now, and I know a lot of people do have trouble teaching their youngsters to do rising or posting trot as they call it in the US, uh, so we'll, we'll have a go teaching that now. What you'll see here is an abbreviated and approximate version of the method taught by Mary Wanless in her books Ride With Your Mind Essentials and Ride With Your Mind Clinic, which go into much more detail about the correct angles and the correct way to align a rider. And Mary has a chapter in my own book on alignment. In a later video, using my daughter Millie as a model, I'll demonstrate how to teach rising trot to an adult, which will include a lot more detail with better shot video. It must also be said that I'm not an official Ride With Your Mind coach, although I will be training for this this year. Regarding the stirrup length, you want to have the thigh at about 45 degrees. The other thing you want to make sure is that the foot is underneath the body. Um, I know a lot of youngsters will ride around with their leg sort of stuck forward like this, and they'll have a lot of trouble doing rising trot. They'll, when they go to rise, their leg will shoot further forward, their whole leg will straighten up and their bum will go to the back of the saddle. So they'll have a, quite a lot of trouble achieving this if the leg is incorrectly positioned. So what I'll do first is actually align the rider before I start. So I do this by taking the, the lower leg, moving it underneath the rider like so, and having the knee against the saddle. So that's kind of, you know, a really important point is to make sure that they have the knee against the saddle, they don't have it stuck forwards, and it's really important that you don't get fixated on the idea of having the heels down. You know, uh, pushing the heels down simply pushes the stirrup forward in a pendulum sort of fashion, causes their bum to go backwards in the saddle. So firstly, I never say to the child, stand up in the stirrups. I think that's a really sort of hiding to nothing and, and will produce the incorrect action. I prefer to say to them, kneel up. So I'll first teach them what up is. So kneel up for me, Edward. That's it, okay. And now you can see that Edward can stay there pretty much, knee against the saddle, foot underneath, and at the, t at the top of the rise, even with the pony jiggling around. <laughs> okay, sit down, sit, that's it. Okay, so you got a little bit wobbly there. Um, so go up again, keep the knee there, go up. So they, so they kneel up, the knee the is the pivot point, and kneel down again and then they sit down. So the idea is that we teach them right from the beginning that the lower leg stays in place and they kneel up and down and the thigh moves around the pivot of the knee. Um, so I'll do that a few more times. I'll say, show me up and show me down. So when I say up, I want you to go right to the top. And when I say down, I want you to come back down again, okay? So hold the strap for me. Uh, the other thing that I see going wrong is that they'll be doing this kind of like bobbling in the saddle, hardly going up or down. So it's really important that you take the time at this point to teach them that what you mean by up and what you mean by down, so that it's nice and clear for them, okay? Make sure that you have the stirrups the correct length as well. So uh, the angle should be at about 45 degrees. Don't get them too long or they'll not be able to rise. Uh, don't get them too short, otherwise the same problem will happen. They won't be able to lever themselves actually up to the top of the rise. So the stirrup length is actually quite important. <laughs> You're getting a bit bored there. <laughs> All right, sit up straight for me. Sit up straight, good. So we'll just have a quick look. Foot underneath, knee against the saddle, look forwards for me. That's it. Okay, so this is much more correct than how it should be. Holding onto the strap makes it difficult to do the rising trot mechanics, but you can clearly see Edward moving up and down in the rising trot. I wouldn't expect him to be able to keep his heels down, but he does a good job of going from the bottom to the top and keeping his leg reasonably still. The leg does not move forward and back in every stride, and here Edward tries it without holding onto the strap. I do like to wean them off using the strap as soon as possible because it prevents them from getting to the top of the rise correctly and having the right sort of mechanics. Now as you can see from Edward, nothing goes perfectly. Uh, you'll find that the lower leg will move out of place, you'll find that he, the, the rider will lose the stirrup, um, you know, you'll find they'll bobble, all kinds of things, but there's a few principles that I'd like you to keep in mind. One the lower leg should be underneath the rider. Two, you should teach the rider to rotate about the knee in the rising trot so that they kneel up and they kneel down. 
and that you condition them to understand what it is that you want when you say up and what you want when you say down and you get them to actually make a clear up and a clear down and uh, make sure they keep the knee against the saddle it's very easy for them to sort of come away from the saddle the whole lower leg to start moving around and they stop being able to use the knee as that fulcrum point to rotate up and down so at this age they don't really have the strength to keep this sort of position all the time and they will lose it and get it and so on but do remember lower leg underneath knee against the saddle rotating about the knee getting up to the top of the rise and back down again and conditioning them so that they know what up and what down means. Thank you very much for watching and uh, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from him. <laughs> Thank you Edward.